Om Shanti, everyone. Welcome to those of you who are here live and also greetings to those of you joining later on through YouTube. Uh, for those of you who have not tuned in before, my name is Shailen and my mother, Ranjan Ben, will join us later on. And these chit chats are for the regular Brahma Kumari students who study the morally and it gives us an opportunity to explore different topics. In these chit chats, there's no such thing as a silly question, as a stupid question, as a nonsense question. Anyone can ask anything or suggest anything, and then we can have a, a discussion. And we've got some experienced uh, yogis in these chit chats, so they can share their perspectives as well. So um, I wonder if uh, those of you that are here right now have anything you'd like to begin with uh, sharing or asking anything brother i have something in mind um i'm not sure how appropriate it is for this to chat but uh, sometimes i listen on youtube you come up with so much information and i've been listening to some of these prophets but they're prophets from the christian faith um and they you know they prophesize things that they hear directly they said from god but through, through Jesus Christ. Um, and a lot of what I say, and, and sometimes they cry because they're so in tune with God and the power of God, but they don't know who God is. And sometimes I, um, I wonder if they, know, uh, if they know who is giving them information, but these prophets and prophet prophetess, they call them, um, they predict things that are happening and will happen and they actually happen. Things that they have predicted actually happen. And they said, and, and they, they, their messages about God is really good. It's some of the, the teachings that you remember God, you have faith in God, and God has chosen some prophets to give messages like in the olden days. And there are lots of prophets on earth now. I, I don't know, um, you know how to relate this with God's, with our Baba's messages, our Baba's teachings, um, whether it's something that um, it, I just like to listen to it. And, and you know, because I am always, um, um, how should I put it, inquisitive or, or I like to, um, the unknown always intrigues me. And that's why I listen to it. Um, I don't know what's your take on that, but these prophets sound as if they're, they're really very, very, very God-fearing people. I don't know what's your take on that or how you would look at that. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, so I think we have to, on one side, use the third eye of knowledge. On the other side, be humble. And we have to accept that this is a tree of a variety of religions. And so many different souls are practicing different types of spirituality, which can give them different benefits. And what we have to see is that it's not that the different religions don't have Baba's knowledge to the to a large degree, because actually when you go into these religions and into these different perspectives, you find a lot of similarity. Um, so, for example, if we're talking about the Christian religion, Baba remembers Christ more than any other religious father. And I think that's because he is most similar in his teachings in many ways and in his example. And Baba tells us actually that that soul did teach celibacy. And that was why he was persecuted when he was persecuted. He certainly thought that it was the confluence age. He thought the kingdom of heaven was coming, the destruction, the judgment day was coming. He thought it was very immediate. So what you tend to find is there's that culture there of that prediction that what's going to happen. Um, 
the prophets even before Christ, they also tend to have this sort of narrative about them. Um, so you will see that you know, he was the Messiah that was predicted. And you've got, for example, John the Baptist, particularly testifying to that. So you tend to find that there are a lot of these predictions occurring right the way through the different faiths. And a lot of this type of um, predicting is memory of the previous cycle. So like with the religious fathers, Baba tells us that they do come and meet Baba at the confluence age. They're in another form. They might be also in an ordinary form, so we don't recognize who they are. But they do take Baba's drishti. And they do take some of the knowledge. Maybe Christ takes a lot of the knowledge. Um, and then they're coming down in the next cycle with a memory. Uh, on a, in another context, Baba talks about how the devotees of the Brahmins also become devotees at the confluence age. These are souls who are not BKs, who benefit from the Brahmins. They take some vibrations. Baba particularly says that once the Brahmins reach their ultimate stage, their stage of fullness, then all the Brahmins will be in the form of bestowing blessing. So that final memory that these souls carry with them is of angels, is of deities. So when these souls come down in the Copper and Iron Age, they remember this representation. So experience shapes them in the next cycle. So we've got this very interesting, um, it's almost like a gymnastic sort of move where inside the mind, the past, present and future is circular. So when someone is saying, I'm predicting the future, are they or are they remembering the past? because they lived through this in the previous cycle. So I think when you hear these religious people predicting, like I suppose the most famous one in Europe is Nostradamus, isn't he? And um, many of you will know Michel de Notre Dame, who's known as Nostradamus. He predicted quite a number of things which seem very accurate. I think he was around about 500 years ago. And, um, you know, people like the rise of Hitler, Napoleon, things like that, they do seem, his predictions do seem pretty accurate. But is he seeing the future? Or was he remembering the past? And so I think what happens is that souls are accessing memory yeah and what you get is that different types of bhakti they can develop different occult powers as well so baba has been talking to us the last couple of sundays and maybe in one or two of the saturday moralies we've been reading that you are learning the correct, you, you how to gain the spiritual capabilities through the correct method at the complement age. But this word siddhi, the spiritual capabilities, this is what people in Bhakti are also trying to attain. And Baba says that you might remember it came in the Morali about six months ago, or maybe a bit longer, where Brahma Baba was saying that there was one guru in india who could see the parliament of london and what was going on then and um you get different seers different types of seeing you get different like shamans don't you that can sort of see through 
the eyes of an eagle or something like that. And you, you go around the world and you've got people who develop different spiritual capabilities. But the methods they're using are not remembering Shibaba. They're, remem they're doing something else. So Baba says, it can't purify you, can't take you to heaven, can't take you to the soul world, but it can render some level of spiritual capability. And then those souls, for example, if someone has performed some sort of practice for one life, then in their next life, they might develop some sort of magical ability. So that person becomes famous as a guru, as a magician. And they, people with those powers, they're often like within the tribe, quite senior people. So this becomes a reward for that soul's bhakti. And they gain that power, they gain that recognition or through that. And it's one of our human tendencies that we want to know as we become more insecure and uncertain. Then knowing the future becomes more important to us. And so a lot of bhakti tends to be around these types of things. And you look at the way the scriptures are written, there are a lot to do with predictions, prophecies, premonitions. And so the stories of the scriptures are actually of these things. Then the second type of pilgrimage place it tends to be around visionary experiences, like um, I was watching a little thing about the place you might have heard of Lourdes in France, where people go. And actually, it's the world's most visited pilgrimage place. More people go there than even to Mecca, um, even to um, like when they gather in India for that, like over the course of the year, like it's spread, but more people attend because. <clears throat> that's to do with health, isn't it? There's like a belief that the waters have a health-giving, a, like a remedy type of property. So what you tend to find is as the insecurities come, people are having bad health. They're going to look for healers. People don't know what's going to happen in the future. They're looking for seers. So it's part of our human condition that gets very impressed by this as well. So Baba says that these dynamics of bhakti are things that he liberates us from. So you find that these, it started off, I think, a lot on a big scale with the large churches in America, like Billy Graham, and they began to come on TV maybe 30 years ago, 35 years ago, something like that. And I think that really was the beginning of this modern age, large scale mass media type of uh, Christian guru figure, sort of Western guru. Then in the last 10, 15 years, of course, we've had YouTube. So it's just gone bigger, more diverse. So it's just these things have become more accessible and available for everyone. But the sanskars are the same things of back then, aren't they? They're, they're not different to the Copper Age. People looking for some something to hang on to that can give them some feeling of certainty, some feeling of solace and comfort. So what Baba says is that these are temporary supports because no one actually knows. And he says, well, the real solution to um, uncertainty is studying the morally. You now know the beginning, the middle, and the end of the drama. You know what you've got to do, you've got a purpose. 
then in terms of health, he says, well, you've got to settle now. But then for half a cycle, through the remembrance of Shiv Baba, through the inculcation of purity, you're going to gain perfect health, no untimely death. You're gaining that certainty. Um, and then in terms of wealth, again, you've got that certainty, unlimited resource. So that's another type of bhakti. Baba was talking two days ago about paras, which is the equivalent in Europe, we call it the philosopher's stone, um, where for centuries people were using a combination really of chemistry, herbology, and bhakti to try and transform metals into precious metal. And so the philosopher's stone has this legend that it can turn stone into gold. The equivalent in India is the paris, which turns stone into diamond. And Baba says, this is all to do with the intellect. You develop a stone and, and it's the morally that changes your intellect into gold, into diamonds. So this is why Baba uses these phrases, because he knows we've been occupying ourselves, either following these gurus. Remember, Brahma Baba had 12 in his in final birth. And this morning he made a comment in the Morally that you be begin making mistakes since the beginning of the Coprage and the last birth, we're hundred percent we're making mistakes. So this is what he's referring to. He was also latching on to all these gurus. Of course, they didn't have mass media in those days. And so it would be person to person, but it's the same sort of thing, isn't it? And it's just much more available now. And Baba is saying that he knows we've been just doing these things and then he, or we've been being a guru ourselves. So we have overestimated our own capability. So there's one sanskar that Dedi Janki used to talk about that we've got to watch within all of this. It's the sanskar of taking a support of a human being and the sanskar of giving support. And she was saying that because of this dynamic, this is what we've been doing for birth after birth, looking for a temporary support, giving a temporary support. So we will have this tendency to do this at confluence age. And so we will look for a Brahmin to also latch onto. We will all, we will look to be the Brahmin that others look up to. And you know, he was referring to this this morning in the Morally as well, but how humble Bhaktada were. And he was sitting in the Gadi so he could see everyone's faces, but otherwise Bhaktada were very, very ordinary down to earth. And early days when Bhaktada were coming into Daddy Gulzar, uh, Daddy Gulzar used to sit on the floor. So the whole of the 1970s, the Moralis we hear, Baba just sat on the floor and spoke the Morali with everyone in Baba's room and in the meditation hall. So what Baba's signaling is break this habit of looking up to others. Remember the Father, he's the highest on high, but he's also teaching us that actually all of the things that we have been claiming or others have been claiming, they actually have all taken us further into darkness because you come into the realm of interpretation. So Bhakti is a lot about misinterpretation. So if you think the sanskars of symbolizing and reading symbols and interpreting symbols and interpreting signs. There are quite a number of walls that have been fought because a king saw a crow fly across their window. This means war. They saw 
um, like I'm thinking of Alfred the Great here in um, the UK, and he was a very monk, very religious king. And it was at the time when the Vikings were dominating England. And until then, no English king had beaten the Vikings. But he saw a deer, and a deer is one of the symbols of Jesus. So he saw a deer just before the battlefield, and he, knew, he thought this is Jesus coming to bless this. So he thought this is now the time to fight. And so what you get is a lot of violence as also, if you think where this all leads to, this interpretation, misinterpretation, what does God, what's God's will here? So Baba says, actually, it's only at the confluence age when I come myself that you know anything. Everything else is a mixture. So I think that would be probably what my understanding of the moral is. Uh, do you want to come back? I, I appreciate all the I appreciate all that you said, and everything that you said is um, is in line with Baba's teachings. Um, we know the Brahmin souls know who God is, and that is something that that uh, it, it's you know it is the, the greatest blessing that we could get at this time to know who God is. Because I I say to myself, all religions, um, all human being who pray they don't know who god is we know who god is so that is a really great fortune so when these prophets come on and say god spoke with me god's power came on me and i'm, I'm saying to myself this is what i battle in my mind and i said i'll ask that today do they really know who is telling them this do they really know who god is um god told me this and this is what i have to tell his children this is what is going to happen, prepare for it. Um, so it was a battle in my mind. So the explanation you gave is that it might be in their memory and it, it is coming back into them through meditation. They don't know, and maybe God is giving them that remembrance, I have no idea, um, as to you know what is going to happen and is their part in this birth to give that message out that that's and i look at it in that way as well but knowing who god is knowing who the father is 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 like the greatest greatest gift that we could get at this time and i i feel very blessed among the brahmins to be in that position to know to have this knowledge at this time which is which is like a miracle in our lives right now thank you so the 25 years ago Devi Jenki did a program at the royal albert hall in london with Uri Geller, the Israeli uh, spiritualist. And um, they titled that program, The Psychic and the Yogi. I think you can still get the video of that. I had the chance to attend that uh, program. And um, Uri Geller had visited the Global Retreat Center a number of times. I think he's a friend of this comedian actress, Ruby Wax. And Ruby Wax was attending Morley a little bit there at the Global Retreat Center. And so I think she then, I think it was her. And um, so Uri Geller had come and heard the Morley a few times and he'd met Daddy and they'd had Drishti together. And that's how this developed. And they used to send Uri Geller the blessing every day. So the London Centre has, I think, a really great system where with all the contact souls, they send them the blessing every day by email. You know, there's like those that don't really want to go into the depth of the philosophy in the morally. But the blessings are much more applied in life, aren't they? They apply application teachings. So they send, maybe they just alter the words maybe slightly, but it's pretty much all the blessing. So they started that around that time, I think, and they began sending him that. And he was just responding, this is great knowledge. This is really wonderful. So he really loved it. And he agreed then to do this program. 
And, you know, they have that time where they're exchanging drishti for a long time. And then afterwards, um, in class, someone had asked Devi, that, is this a Brahmin song? And Devi had gone into a few moments of silence and she said, no, she doesn't think so. But she can see that he has the ability to draw energy directly from God. So through that, I understood that we, there are many souls in the tree. This is the thing that this is what Baba is saying to us. That it's a variety of souls. And he is the seed of the whole tree. So you've got some souls in this tree, maybe most souls, maybe most souls, who don't have a direct connection with the seed. They will always gain their energy through another. So, so if you bring the picture of the tree in your mind, or I can uh, bring it up if, um, because maybe people watching on YouTube, not everyone maybe is so familiar with these things. So uh, if you give me a moment, I will just bring it up. Um, We'll just uh, share my screen. So, mm. so what Baba explains to us is that he is the seed of this human world tree. And all souls, they make up this human family. So it's a family tree. But every soul has their own place in this tree. So this morning, Baba was remembering the Aga Khan, and they are part of the Ismaili Khorja sect. So I was explaining this morning in the class that if we think about it, that sect would be one of these like sub branches here, sort of coming at the end of the Iron Age of that Muslim branch. So what you got is the followers of the Aga Khan, they would worship him. So he would, they would go through him to then gain their spiritual energy. So what you find is as souls are further out, they're going through to gain that energy from the seed and the trunk. Baba tells us these main founder souls, these fathers, they have a direct connection with the seed. So he says that at the confluence age, all of them will come and meet Baba. And then he's saying that soul like Uri Gela, who knows what where he is in the tree, what his past births were. But he has that ability to connect with the seed. So there will be some souls in this tree that maybe they're like guru souls and they're like, um, they might even have their own sect within the branches of the tree. Maybe they're able to correct, connect more directly with the seed and gain that energy. Then Baba says that many, many souls 
they actually are going to gain their energy through the Brahman soul. So that why Baba focuses on the Brahman souls is because you are the roots of the tree and the trunk of the tree. And the roots are remembered as the angels and so many faiths, particularly the Western faiths, which is on the left-hand side of the tree. They, they, are, they have a lot of connection and depiction of angels. On the right-hand side of the tree are the faiths established in India. And there's less, less depiction of angels there. But these faiths, they have more of a depiction of the deities, of the trunk of the tree. And Baba says, that's who you are. You are the angels, you are the deities. So <clears throat> he speaks in the moralese about how the devotees in India they, he says, focus your message to the devotees of Shiva and of the deity. Because these souls are actually taking either, when, when they worship Shiva, they tend to have the image of Shankar really in their mind, um, or the Shivalingam, but they don't really know what the Shivalingam is representing, or the worshippers of Krishna like that, or Rama. So he says, focus on those souls because they're actually taking through these images. And so Baba says, they probably belong to your religion. They might themselves be that. So you've got a lot of these faiths then represented by these deities. And then you've got a lot of the angels there remembered through the Western faiths. So Baba says that there will be many souls who won't take directly from Shiv Baba. But you souls now have to fill yourselves. And as you fill yourselves with Shiv Baba's energy, they will then take indirectly from Shiv Baba through you. So we used to find this even in the London Center, that when Daddy Janki is there, souls who never come, they're there. Because really, they're taking from Baba through that Egypt. They don't want to take directly. The regular students, Baba says, all of the Brahmins, you can't give anything to a Brahmin who's coming regularly to the Morali and having their own yoga. They've got their own connection. You can only cooperate with those Brahmins. And of course, we all cooperate with each other. But you can't give anything to the Brahmins who have the direct connection. We obviously want to try and encourage everyone to have a direct connection, but that's actually not going to happen because the tree teaches us it's not going to happen. Um, there are going to be many souls who then take from other souls. So like in that case of Uri Gela, maybe he has a role of being like a support for many other devotees. So he then took through Daddy Janki, he then took directly from the Morley points. And then I don't think he comes anymore. Maybe that was it, you know, that was his time of taking. Um, he took what he needed from Baba. And then he's got his own role as a devotee. So this is how um, this, it's like a cascading of treasures that Shiv Baba does. So if we turn this tree around and we imagine that Shiv Baba is at the top, cascading his energy down and it filters through the tree, some are able to catch directly, others it's filtering towards them uh, bit by bit. So this is why Baba says it's only at confluence age that you get that direct access and only those that study the morally understand who Shri Baba is, then they remember directly. And you now have that chance to body, mind, wealth directly. Use everything with Shri Baba. The whole of the rest of the cycle, we get spread around this tree because you are the souls who take rebirth. So Baba was saying that 
we begin with making like 1% mistake here. And by the last birth of the Iron Age, he said, is 100% mistake. This is the birth of the 100% mistakes. So we have more clarity earlier. And then the problem is there's no shortage of information of bhakti, is there? There's always someone telling us something. So we get lost in as bhakti spreads. There's like too much. So no one knows what is actually the clarity until Shubhaba comes again. Would anyone that like to come in with anything on any of that? So then, would anyone like to um, ask anything else or say anything else? Yeah, maybe, <clears throat> yes, we as Brahmins know who God is, but uh, how much we recognize him is still a journey, I think, for myself it is. <laughs> I realized I knew it uh, all along, but I mean, from since becoming a Brahmin, but I know now that I have not recognized fully and still some way to go. <laughs> so the fortune is maybe connected to how much we recognize and that's just some comment. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I agree. I think this is my main hobby really, that why I love studying morally is actually it's studying even the same morally over time the recognition is growing, the understanding is growing. So Baba always uses this phrase, doesn't he? Understand yourself to be us. Understand who's, you know, who is God. He's, he's wanting our understanding to grow. Sometimes when we use the word recognition, it's like a, we think it's an event. But recognition is linked with understanding, and understanding takes some time. Then there's the understanding on the level of information, and there's the understanding which is developed through experience. So Baba says, also practice your yoga. Because as you practice your yoga, then the experience of Shri Baba then enlightens you further when you hear the morally points. So what we gain in the morally is Shri Baba introducing himself but also Brahma Baba sharing his experience of what Shababa is like, who he is, his qualities, his personalities. Now, Brahma Baba has experienced these things. And um, Ranjan Ben shares sometimes about how when people ask Jagdish Bhai, that you are said to be Sanjay, the one with divine insight, you surely recognize God. Do you want to share? No. Yeah, sure. Um, and Jagdish Bhai used to say, I know to some extent, but really you only know someone when you live with them. And Brahma Baba has this role in the drama, living with Shri Baba. So he lived with Shri Baba in the corporeal, but now in the subtle region, he lived with him all these years. And I wonder whether Brahma Baba's recognition of Shiv Baba has also grown in the subtle age. As he continues to live with him, he continues to see what Shiv Baba does. He continues to know more and more. And so we gain even more understanding and experience. And then Shiv Baba, if you look in the morally, he talks about Brahma Baba a lot. And so he tells us who Brahma Baba is, like yesterday, this is the mother, this is also Prajapita. So we're gaining recognition of Brahma as well. Because many people, they, 
are big Brahmins because they recognize Shiv Baba. But sometimes the understanding of Brahma is a bit, can be conflicted also, uh, because we want to move away from thinking about human beings and these sorts of things. But what we are understanding, I think, daily is Shiv Baba saying to us that it's this role of Bab Dada that unlocks even something different in Shiva. So I think it's this continuous hearing of the morally, churning of the morally, that then develops our recognition because we're understanding that Shiva Baba is also different according to the time of the cycle. We're understanding that Brahma and Shiva, they play a role, a confluence together. And that confluence really changes everything for everyone. So we have to understand one and we have to understand the other. And then we have to understand the relation between the two. And I remember I played and we did a portrayal of the Gita scene when I was 17 years old at the London Centre. I've always liked drama and acting and a lot of my childhood as a BK was performing plays for the London Centre. Um, it's a good way to sustain the children and also occupy and not good for the family when children perform these things. And um, we did the Gita scene for the 18th January program in 1995. And uh, Robin Ramsey had done it uh, for the Peace of Mind retreat um, that October in Madhuba. And the, they had the idea that they would do that uh, for the 18th January program in London. But we did it with a different style. So I was Krishna, as Anthea Church was Arjun, and Sister Sheena, she was Sanjay, the narrator. And um, I remember you know, people felt very mesmerized by that play. Daddy Janki absolutely loved it. She adored it. Uh, she saw it three times because we did it in three different programs. Um, and she gave this comment to Anthea, who was playing Arjun. She said, what you're saying and everything is really great, but you're missing one thing. You're not communicating the love and the warmth between God and Arjun. And this warmth between Shiva and Brahman, that has to come across in this. And I don't think I really understood it then, you know, as a 17 year old, I think I was busy acting. But, you know, over the years, that has stayed with me, that what Devi Janki brought across as well in her classes was this love that these two souls have for each other. And we are a product, when we're adopted with the children, we're a product of the love of our parents, the love that the parents have for each other. And that's who the children are. You're a product of love between the two. So this is recognition of Shiva, but also recognition of Brahma and a recognition of the relationship between the two. So I think we should approach it with a sense of discovery. That's how I approach every day is morally. I think, what am I going to discover? Um, in a couple of weeks, I thought we would do a series on um, churning as well, because I had a request from one sister that could I do a few of the Saturday classes on how to churn the world and how do I churn the world? So we'll do some sessions on that. But in my heart is this sense of discovery. So every day, I look forward to hearing the morley. You'll appreciate I've heard these morleys, each and every one of them, at least a thousand times already. So I really know these morleys, but every day, 
I feel a sense of discovery. And it was only in today's Mali that I caught this point about, you know, why does Shiva, he says, I come into the body of this one to share the beginning, the middle, and the end. And it's this thing, you know, this relationship with the soul who actually goes around, who has a beginning, the middle, and the end. Daddy Janki used to say that isn't it a wonder she, when she was reading the Morley and these points were coming up, she used to say, isn't it a wonder Shiv Baba comes and shares with us our beginning, middle, and end, he, even though he doesn't come through the beginning, middle, and end. So the one who doesn't experience a beginning, middle, and end of the cycle is the one who shares with us our beginning, middle, and end. And that line has been remembered in the Hindu Gita. It's there, in that there. So Krishna says to Arjun, you don't know your many births. I come and share them with you. And so this has been captured, that this, what's the sentiment there? That Brahma was so in awe that he was hearing about his births from Shobhaba. So if you think back, this is this month of January, and how Brahma first was given these visions, and the first vision he had was Vishnu saying to him, I am you, you are me. So Shobhaba is saying that I come and share with you your beginning. So this is how he did it, because there were no moralies at that point. So he began with visions for Brahma. And then Later on, he's, and then the next vision was of heaven. Then the third vision was of the end of destruction. And uh, Brahma saying to Shubhava, stop this. I don't want to see this anymore. Can you not show me that nice one of heaven? I enjoyed that one. Why are you showing me this vision? But Shubhava was beginning to share. This is your beginning. This is your end. It's also the end of the whole of humanity. So it's interesting, isn't it, how then Brahma says to us this morning, I go around this birth, this cycle of 84 births. This is again, Tatvam, same, same for you. Tatvam is a Sanskrit word, same for you. So Devi Janki used to read the Morgu like that and how, how Brahma Baba used to act. So, Vishnu in that vision said to him that Tatvam, so I am Vishnu, Tatvam, so are you. And so Brahma with that sentiment says to us this morning, I go around this cycle of 84 words, Tatvam, so do all of you Brahmins. You are the same as me. You are the clan of Vishnu. And so it's said with that sentiment that you are like me, Vishnu. You are like Brahma. And he is discovering from Shiv Baba, oh, this is who I am. Let me also discover myself. So this self-discovery is also linked with this relationship with Shiva and Brahma. And as we understand them, we understand ourselves. Oh, okay, this is also my cycle. This is why I am who I am. And we've gone through our different journeys. The end is an interesting one, isn't it? Because the beginning, the Brahmins share. The middle, the Brahmins share. He says that you are the souls who begin Bhakti. You are the ones who first do the unadulterated bhakti of one incorporeal shiva. So the beginning and the middle is the time that the Brahmins share. But the end, we all share with all souls, all religions, right? That is a common experience amongst the whole human family. So Baba says that if you look in the religions, like Sister Lynette was saying, this is the type of thing that people have remembered, isn't it? The end times, the judgment day, that's what they remember. They've then remembered that 
God's kingdom will come. Yeah, that's in Christianity, in Islam. They remember that because it's the conflict. But until you know the cycle, it doesn't really make sense that how the ages are changing. So the end time is a common experience amongst all of us. Because at this time, we're all here together. But the beginning and the middle is a unique experience for the souls who go around the cycle. So I approach every day's morning with that excitement of the discovery. And so maybe we should almost substitute that word recognition for discovery, for understanding. Because both are gradual, incremental processes, rather than suddenly I had a realization. I like, you know, I don't think it's like that. I think it's something that's built. Would anyone like to come in? Thank you. Thank yeah, you very much. This word discovery and understanding brings a very nice angle to it. Thank you, brother. Om Shanti Sagan Bhai. Om Shanti. Um, beautiful sharing. I just have a question. Um, you've started the Gyan when you're young, but I'm just trying to gauge that. How did you have any bhakti sanskars? I think all of us would have, Baba said, the higher devotion and come to into the knowledge. Did you have any bhakti sanskars, you or your mom? How did you overcome that bhakti well, sanskars? Yeah, I'll let uh, Ranjan Ben share her experience in a little while because she came to knowledge when she was 37, so it's a different experience. Uh, for people like me, when we come at a young age, I, I was four years old when Renjan Ben came. My understanding is that souls like me, we um, were Brahmins in our last birth. So Daddy Janki used to say this to me. So we're seeing so many Brahmins that are leaving the body now, aren't they? They were studying the Morley for many years. So probably I dealt with my Bhakti Sanskars in my previous life. So I not had to do that now. And I, what was useful for me was to have the knowledge early and understand it early. Because as you can see, I'm quite intellectual type. So I think what drama did was give me the knowledge first. So I look through the knowledge of the world with Baba spectacles. I sense that if it was the other way around and I had science first and things, maybe I would doubt what Baba is saying. I, I'm not sure how well I would accept it, but I haven't had to do that in this life. For me, the challenge is, you see, when you're young, um, you haven't had, got that experience. So you're starting again, really. Um, you've got different sets of parents and sanskars and karmic accounts. So You've got a lot of baggage from family, as we all have. You've got a lot of baggage of the world. So you're going to, well, you're, you're influenced again. Um, so you've got all of those influences. And then as Brahmins, there's a level of suppression. If you come as a child, you don't really know yourself as a person. So all of those things, those sanskars, those are the things that I continue to deal with. And my experience has been that over the years, just by keeping going, um, a lot of things have been cleared away. So for me, I think it's challenging the vices, um, challenging old patterns and old ways of doing things, just like we all have to do the old, the, the variety of sanskars. It's those things more than the bhakti sanskars. Um, but then there are more subtle residue of bhakti that I still am very aware of. So I was talking earlier about the sanskar of being impressed. So well, for many years, uh, so Devi Janki first came to our house in 1995. 
and we were living in a place called Collindale in northwest London at the time and um, she came to give a class I think it was Monday the 3rd of September 1995 that seems to be my memory um, and um, obviously a very big thing for us and <laughs> What I had done, I, it, this was early days, really, of my effort. So I came as a child, but you're young, you know, you're a child. So I was not, I was coming probably once a month, uh, maybe to do the plays, maybe to, so I knew the knowledge, um, sometimes to meet daddy, but mostly I was busy playing football and uh, doing things in, with my friends and things. Um, but, you know, keeping all of the principles and things, but doing the other things. And I was in my own space. But it was um, in 1993, there's one brother there who looks after the IT department, Brother Shashin, in the London Centre. And Daddy had asked him to set up a group for commands. And he set that up when I was 15 years old, and he contacted me. And they began, they decided that what they would do is churn the morally. So whatever Baba was coming. So the moralies we're hearing of 1993, that's the season where I had like my awakening. Um, so it was, these moralies are precious to me. Like we had the 25th of November. And then um, we'll be hearing, I think it's the 2nd of December is the next one, probably tomorrow. So I've read these moralies as part of that group back in 1993. And we used to meet on a Sunday and you had to have read the morally before you came and then churned. So that was when I was coming and I liked reading the moralies and my habit of reading the morally began from that. And um, I, I got encouraged by that group to do that. Um, I would, my early days of churning. And so um, people used to like some of the things I was saying. So that gave me confidence. There. And Sister Charu, um, who uh, was living with Daddy and Baba Pavan, um, she began to take me to classes with her and she used to say okay prepare a bit of a morally and I used to go with her and then I would share something for 10 minutes so she would give the class and then 10 minutes I would share something and so then that's how my further interest in reading the morally's developed and then I it was around about um December 93, when I was 15 years old, just about to turn 16 years old, that I began to think I should come every day again. I think I should come to the morning class. And I remember it vividly. It was the Christmas vacation in 1993. I just had the thought, right, from tomorrow, I'm going to change. I'm going to wake up for Amrit Vela every morning, and I'm going to read the morning. And I have this in my personality, that once I decided I'm going to do something, I just do it. The, no one's going to stop me. So I've been from then. So it was then, and then, but you got these subtle sanskars. So when daddy came in 95 first, so, you know, I was, she gave me a lot of love in that period because I was in my, transition, a lot of encouragement. Baba was also showing her a lot of things about me. Um, and so she came, she gave a lot of, so she was telling me a lot of things about my future and how I would become a great yogi and how I've got these things like that, how I got these some great gifts. So like when I, I passed my first thing she wanted from all young brothers was that we pass our driving test so we can drive a motor car because uh, she thought that we're very useful for Baba's task if we can drive a car. And so she wanted us all to do that. So as soon as we turn 17 here in the UK, we can begin learning. So that was the first thing. And I passed my driving test in August, first time as well, in August 1995. And first thing I did was 
and go and see her. Tell I telephoned her actually, and then later on I drove the car to Baba Baban to meet her. And Jendi Ben was there, and I told Jendi Ben, "Oh, I passed my driving test." And she said to, da to Daddy, "Daddy, do you know that? Did you hear that Shailen has passed his driving test?" And she said, yes, I know, he already told me on the phone. He's already got a blessing from Baba from his last birth that he's going to pass in everything. So she was giving me all of these encouragements and these insights. And I've always passed every exam. You know? Like I, even exams I never studied in, I went and passed. <laughs> so uh, it's like I got this blessing from maybe I passed some tests with Maya or something in my last birth. So Baba then said, okay, I'll give him a blessing. I'll help him out in his next life. So and things like that were happening a lot at that time. Um, and I was impressionable as well. So for me, there was no difference between daddy and Baba. Like she was like, anything she said was like, and I um, had a big picture of Daddy Janki in my hallway and a big picture of Daddy Prakashmani. So Daddy walked in to the house and we welcomed her with flowers and that type of thing. And then she looked at the wall and her smile turned into a frown. And she looked at me and she said, you are a bugget. And uh, she, she just shook her head at me, looking at all these pictures. So I think it took me many, many years not to get very impressed with all the daddies and the deedies and the brothers and the sisters. And, you know, it's taken me many years. So there's, it's not the direct bhakti, like sanskans, but... It's these more subtle embedded behaviors of bhakti um, where you're initially, you're just looking up to everyone and you're impressed with everyone. And then over the years, you're developing your own understanding more clearly, looking more objectively at everything, having self-confidence more and developing that direct connection with Baba. And Baba always teaches us a balance. So you can't just say, oh, I'm only lit. I've got a direct connection with Shabbat, I don't need it. So it's always a balance within these things. But I would say that the sanskars of being impressed by anyone, they're now completely gone. Um, and it's really a case of um, learning from everyone, being open, from everyone to listen to everyone but now for probably the last 20 years now I mainly trust my own judgment and um, if I make a mistake then I make a mistake and what I've been very fortunate is Baba then has always helped me out to put things right most of the time I'm protected and as we get more mature then Baba saying, don't make the mistake in the first place. Get it right in the first place. So I think that's probably my journey. I'll let uh, Ranjan then share her experience of transitioning from Bhakti into knowledge. And I'll fetch the microphone. Uh, Ranjan Ben's pointed out to me that I forgot to put it. Om Shanti. Good morning to all. Can you hear me? Sister. Yes, uh, well, I did do bhakti because, uh, you know, our house every morning and evening we would have RT and diva, the lamps, and we had lots of photos, uh, especially of Krishna and Vishnu and uh, goddesses. So, of course, so it takes some time, but uh, once you recognize Baba, and as we all know, we like it, and then, you know, we are in the middle, like both sides. It, it takes time in the beginning, uh, because I used to chant mantras, and as you read the Muli, you understand more and more. Even then, the habits of bhakti, like asking God or something happens, 
um, what did I do wrong? And, you know, uh, that went on for a while. And I used to chant all those mantras. And then I just used to say to myself, you know, um, that you have a right. Why are you asking? And um, it took some time. So it's just remind yourself. And as more you understand, you feel, well, no, no, it doesn't uh, um, it look nice. Baba has opened treasure st uh, store and he, has, he looks at me with uh, uh, high vision and asks me to, uh, you know, serve others and show them how can I, uh, while I'm doing this, I won't be able to serve others or myself and won't be able to achieve anything for the future, like high status. But before that also, you know, putting this um, knowledge into practical because it's for a practical life and making your future bright. And this is how I used to just, so it took some time, but uh, you know, more and more you understand Baba and yourself and why Baba is saying this. I mean, Brahma Baba did a lot of something and uh, even daddies, but then you see once they recognize, so they started, so you can, uh, you know, just talk to yourself and just, uh, you know, you will have courage and then you just automatically more you understand and do, more you, would you want, I mean, it's good to respect others. And if you go to Mandir or something, you can just say Namaste, our relatives, uh, you know, most of them, you know, like some relatives don't like Om Shanti all the time. They have their own, like J.C. Krishna and Ram Ram and all those. So it's okay. You just say that and, and uh, respect them. They come with the RT, you know, in one. So just but inside you, you know, Baba says when you go to a temple, you just uh, remember the knowledge. You say, oh, this is our uh, uh, bhakti in our, uh, you know, we are seeing our own bhakti with our own eyes now. And we used to worship our own um, idols. So like that, you know. And so, um, you, like, am I right that you used to worship Srinath, the form of Krishna, mm -hmm. and Gayatri, the goddess? And uh, is it right that on the 18th of January, 1969, when Brahma Baba was leaving, and you were in London? Yeah. You had, you felt him, but this yeah. is before you had the knowledge, isn't it? Yes, be, um, much before knowledge, yes. I uh, was walking in the park and I suddenly, you know, I was uh, rather uh, feeling, you know, down and just lots of uh, thoughts and wondering about things. And uh, uh, I just, uh, Brahma Baba appeared sort of, and sort of, uh, you know, giving me that vision and, and reassuring me. But my part didn't open up until I, I kept on doing bhakti. Of course, I didn't know Baba, and and my part didn't open until 1982. So, so you had that visionary experience on the day Baba was leaving. And then you had another couple of visions later on, didn't you, uh, that prepared you. But... Am I right that you used to um, offer services in the Hare Krishna temple? Yeah. Is that that one in Elstree, that side? Is yes. North of yeah. London. Yeah, near Watford, yeah. Yeah, something heat or something. Yeah. yeah. So you used to yeah. mainly go and do those things. Yes. And how did you find that transition then? Because if you were involved there. Yeah, yeah. But then, uh, you know, I... Uh, just then afterwards, you get busy in your life and, you know, but uh, still, but then uh, it's just that when I, I really wanted to know and I just, uh, something was telling me, uh, you know, and, and these sanskars, you know, a presence of scars of Baba, knowing Baba knowledge, I think we have it with, with us and then they emerge. And they sort of guide you and you think, and then when your part, Baba says everyone's part is 
accurate. Like when I first came out, I said, why didn't I get this before? You know, why did I have to have to wait so long? And, you know, but, uh, you know, like Sudesh, every, like we said to somebody, well, it's accurate. Our, everybody's part opens up at the accurate time. Drama is accurate. It was so a, even believing that but it was a unique thing yeah. how you got the knowledge right yeah am i right that your father was unwell yeah, yeah. and then i was uh, my father was unwell and i was in the casualty in uh, the, in emer Edgeville, the emergency in the north london and um you know two of our sisters came from they lived in in hendon and um uh, you know, I was, there, she approached me and she said, I said, yes, I'm looking for our peace and uh, my mind keeps wandering and feeling disturbed, you know, uh, with a lot of things. And so this is how I came and then I went to Baba Pavanshi again. But, but am I right that, that one of those sisters, she had come to the emergency department with pain in her chest? Uh, yes. Yeah. But then after they gave you the message, the pain went away and they just went home. Yeah, she was okay. Yeah, yeah she was okay. So isn't that amazing? So those sisters had the pain. They ended up in the emergency department yeah. to give Renjan Ben the message. As soon as they gave the message, their health was okay. They just went home. They didn't need to even see the doctor. So, so we, we all have our journey, Sujata Ben. You have yours as well. But give yourself patience, time. Yeah. yeah. But Baba says, you know, says, and now, you know, we have all this knowledge and um, uh, you know, uh, uh, obvious signals and try and understand. And Baba uh, often says he doesn't like his children to ask or beg. You know, Baba looks at you, with, us with high vision and he just wants us to have courage and ask him for his help uh, in a nice way and claim our rights. You know, Adhika, we have a right on Baba, but we have to use, like we read the movies on city, DTCD, on, on methods, secure methods, and we have a lot of movies. And, and uh, so uh, just being a soul and Baba's humble child, Remembering Baba the point, Baba. And uh, nowadays we have all this self-respect. Baba would like us back to our self-respect. That was the first riddle, who am I? And Baba gave us that, that you are a soul. First, Baba always said, you are a soul. And then gave his own introduction. And actually this conversation yeah. about Bhakti leads us nicely into the moral we're going to read now. As this is the last time we're going to meet on a Saturday in this auspicious month of January, uh, let's complete the set. You'll remember two weeks ago we read the Morley of the 25th of January. And then last week you heard Shabbaba talk on the 1st of Yaf Morley on the 21st of January 1969. And then after the funeral, after that first of Yaf Morley, discussions began about Baba's ashes, what should be done with them? Because um, the funeral pyre, I sent the photographs in the groups uh, and you saw that the funeral pyre was actually created in what was the sports ground. And it's in the exact location where the Tower of Peace is now. And so, what should they do with the ashes? They were discussing that at this time and then talking to Baba about it because they didn't want certainly Brahma Baba being cremated in the crematorium ground. This was Shiv Baba's chariot. That body was like the temple of Shiva as well. And so it was kept in Pandavavan. But the daddies also then felt, do you just throw it in a river? Is that appropriate there? Um, so they did, they wasn't feeling right for them. So they, this morally is spoken in the middle of that type of discussion. Eventually, they, they Janki said they decided that 
they would put half of the ashes underneath the Tower of Peace, and half of the ashes are underneath the trans, like the light box, in Baba's room in Pandava. So they're buried underneath Baba's room, and the other half are buried underneath the Tower of Peace. So um, that's what they decided in the end. But I think they were still discussing at the time this morning is uh, spoken. So I'll hand over to Andrew now. And then, of course, they had to get a permission from the government, you know, they had to. And they did give it because they said he was a great soul and uh, such a personality. So they gave the permission. And so, do you remember last week, Smurli, Shri Baba as a father asked us to take a grip and answer all the answers, why the mother, Brahma, Brahma Baba didn't take a leave. And then at the end, like, you know, father tells us off and well, and, uh, you know, shows us a stern eye and teaches us laws. And then the mother quietly, observes and listens to that and the end mother comes and the Brahma Baba our mother did the same and so Brahma Baba uh, came and said he will uh, definitely Sakar Baba said that he will come to celebrate the meeting with the children this was last week we read if he had come today means on that day on 21st with Shri Baba you would be shedding tears and then Baba said, Acha. and after that, Baba uh, uh, incarnated in the body of Daddy Gulzar in the morning after Bhog had been offered and spoke the following elevated versions. They are short. I'm just reminding you because, you know, and then um, we'll start it smoothly because uh, do you remember Baba said, uh, to give defects, uh, we all, uh, Baba said, uh, now today, whatever defects you want to give, two things we have to give to Baba. And Baba said, mostly you want to give your fluctuating stage. And secondly, the donation of not uh, seeing defects. So we donated to, to Baba and then Baba came and gave us a message. Baba Dada is present now and will always so Baba reassured, we always will be present to make you angelic. Now, having met all of you spiritual jewels, Bab Dada is taking leave. We will meet again. There is benefit in whatever happens. There is Bab Dada and benefit. There are no other words. You know, today's slogan was like that as well about drama. And so this was uh, that moodly of 21st. Baba reassured all of us because they didn't know what would happen. And then, um, um, then Baba said, love and remembrances. This time, Baba saw what was inside each one. Let there always be this love and remembrance. This love and remembrance is like a thread. Always maintain this thread. Through this thread, we will keep meeting from time to time. Baba said that the task of establishment will continue as it has done from the beginning until the end. Baba Dada will continue to give directions to all the children through those that he has made instruments and everyone will experience the directions of Bab and Dada together. At the confluence, Bab and Dada cannot be separated. Baba has said that you must tell everyone two words, unshakable and constant. This is a gift from both Bab and Dada. When important people go somewhere, they give gifts. In the same way, Bab Dada is giving you the gift of these two, two words. Keep it in the safe of the intellect. So our intellect is a safe and keep these two words. Remember, unshakable and constant. So Baba is saying, keep it 
safe in the intellects. Your intellect is a safe in such a way that even if someone tries to steal this gift, it always stays with you. Om Shanti. And so now, this is the bully of 22nd January 69. Give the hand of your intellect to Bab Dada and you will not fluctuate in the ocean of tests. So this is also, we'll have lots of tests so and Baba is giving us mm -hmm. the solution. Yeah, it's, it's just one page later than we read. I, this is what I told you, that we'll read quickly. What the message? Uh -uh, yeah, this and then this. This is only two pages. Okay. okay. Is that okay? I'll go a bit faster. Okay, so, no problem. So because I thought, well, it is a nice continuation and then it will give a solution, you know, of the taste and whatever. So give the hand of your intellect, just now Baba said, to Bab Dada and you will not fluctuate in the ocean of tests. News from the subtle region at the time of offer, offering bhog in the afternoon. That was the morning and this is the afternoon. Today, when I went to the subtle region, Brahma Baba met me like he used to meet me in the corporeal form. This is Dadi Gulzar. Baba said, according to the hour of children's lunch time, you have come late. And then Dadi replied, Baba, your time of taking lunch was around 1 or 1.30. Baba replied, when Baba used to eat with the children, that is in the corporeal world in, in Madhuban, he would eat at the time the children would be having lunch. According to that time, you have come here a little late. So in the subtle region, the time was different from our time of this world one o'clock time. So a little late. Then Baba said to Brahma Baba, and so she Baba said to Brahma Baba, take this. What did I see? Just as Baba would be sitting in this in his office on a chair and writing a letter, I saw that same pad and pencil. I was troubled to see all these things and wondered how they came in the subtle region. Then Baba gave Dadi Gulzar a letter written in his own writing. Then Dadi read the, that and written, uh, and it was written in to the jewels of the eyes, the spinners of the discus of self-realization after giving love and remembrance, Baba is today meeting the children who are stable in the obvious stage through the obvious form. On another page was written, children continue to go into the depth of the teachings that you have received from Bab Dada through the corporeal form. Now do not forget and do not remember. After farewell, there was also a signature like Baba used to sign. Baba said, I even wrote a letter at the time I used to write and then I was waiting for the food. Then I fed Baba. Baba said, although the things come to the subtle region, the taste of the food of the yagya is very good. Then Baba accepted the food. So Baba said at this time, the food of the yagya or any centers cooked in Baba's remembrance is very good. Then Baba accepted the food. When I was coming here, Baba showed me a scene. There was an ocean so with very strong waves. Baba said, go to the middle of the ocean. So daddy was a little afraid and wondered how I would go in the middle of such strong waves. Then, according to Baba's orders, I put my feet in the ocean. Wherever I placed my feet, the waves began to come, become calm and peaceful. 
Then I saw that both Bap and Dada placed small boats in the middle of the ocean. You know how we make paper boats and play, you know, in the water and Baba did the same. Some boats disappeared when the waves of the ocean came to them. Some continued to rock about with the waves and some remained as they were. I remained busy in seeing this. <clears throat> then that scene finished. Then Bhat Dada said, Baba has created this game in a practical way. The children whose boat of their life is with the father will not shake. You are now moving in the middle of the ocean of test. So the boat of life of those who have a connection, that is, who have their hand in Bhaktada's hand, will neither shake nor sink. If you children continue to move along, continuing this to be a play of the drama, you will not fluctuate. Those whose hand and company of the intellect is black will continue to rock about. This is why children have to pay special attention to keep, to keep the hand of the intellect strongly in Baba's hand. So Baba answered your uh, answered you, Sujata Ben, it seems, and all of us. Don't you think? Okay, do you understand? Yeah. No. Now I'll continue. This is the Moodley of the 23rd January, 1969. The ashes are to remind you of the stage. Today, I have come in the avyakt form to meet all of you children. So, do you remember last time, 21st January 69, only Shimbaba came. In this morally, the 23rd of January 69, only Brahma Baba comes. So usually both of them come together, but I think to show us that both of them it still exists. I think at that time, everyone was a bit shocked. With that. Where is Baba gone? So Brahma Baba, Shri Baba had said, Brahma will come next time. And so Brahma has come and he is um, sharing now. And Baba reassured Brahma Baba that I will come and this is why. And Baba is teaching us when Baba keeps his word, they both keep their words, then they promise. Today, I have come in the avyakt form to meet all of you children. Only my children who are stable in the avyakt stage will understand this. Whilst all of you children are stable in the avyakt stage, whom are you seeing? Are you seeing him, Brahma Baba, in the avyakt corporeal form or the avyakt subtle form? Are you in the corporeal or the subtle stage? If you look whilst in the vyak, vyak that is in the in this body stage, you will not be able to see the father. It is like Baba's teaching us that uh, we have to uh, uh, work to become angel and uh, go beyond this body consciousness because like, uh, like iron or magnets uh, attracts you know, same thing. So Baba will understand our language and will, uh, you know, we will be attracted only if we are uh, in our object stage. And this is what Baba is teaching us, isn't it? Are you in the corporeal or the subtle stage? If you look whilst in the work, this is corporeal stage, body sta bodily stage, you will not be able to see the father. Today I have come from the subtle region to meet you. So Brahma Baba is saying now he is in the subtle region. So become like him, subtle and of your angel. He is not anymore in the corporeal. He's waiting for us up there. And this is why Baba is teaching us to make those efforts now to become of your angels. Today I have come from the subtle region to meet you. 
There is no sound in the subtle region, but I have come here into sound. What thought is inside all of you? This is now the Vyakt meeting. This is now the Avyakt meeting, so angelic meeting. It is as though the heart to heart conversation with the children continues like a kalpa ego. Cycle ago, Baba came in the same way. Baba has come. Sweet Baba has sent me to have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with you, children, and to meet all of you. So she Baba asked Rabba Baba to go and have this conversation with children and to meet all of you. The one who was here is still here. So the Brahma Baba, same Brahma Baba who was in the corporeal in Madhuba is up there in the avyakt, in the angelic form. He is still there waiting for us. Two or three days ago, there was a heart to heart conversation with sweet Baba. That was in the 21st we had with Shiv Baba. Now, what was the heart to heart conversation? Do you know that? I think that was meaning that a few days before he left. Oh, I see. Shiv Baba had told him that it's time to come. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. No, this is Brahma Baba while he was still in uh, Madhuban in a corporeal body. And then he's giving his, his um, experience. So two or three days ago, there was a heart to heart conversation with sweet Baba. What was heart to heart conversation? Do you know that? Shri Baba asked Brahma Baba, are you ready to experience the subtle region? What would I have replied? What would Brahma Baba reply? Brahma Baba replied, whatever is Baba's directions, as you make me move, wherever you make me sit, in whatever form you make me sit, I am ready. There must be the thought within the children. Why did Bab Dada not take leave? This was also said to Baba. Baba replied, if I had set all the children down and asked them to let you take leave, would they have given it? Even Brahma Baba asked you, Baba, and Shri Baba said, if, even if he had asked all of us, all of the children, would they have given the leave? Seeing the children and the service, you would have been affected by that love. And so whatever Baba made me do is said to be the destiny of the drama. If not in the corporeal form, you are still meeting in the avyakt form. The expansion of service is the same. The remembrance of the children is the same. But the difference is that whereas that one was avyakt whilst in the corporeal form, this one is only subtle. So now Brahma Baba has become subtle angel. Those who know about the meeting with the eyes will take the directions and the teachings for themselves through their eyes in this short meeting. All of you have to come to the subtle region anyway. Baba is always ready at all times to have a meeting with the children. Now the children will be able to have the experience of an avyakt meeting to the extent that their intellects are clear. So Baba is asking us to keep our intellects clear in order to meet Baba in the subtle region and becoming angels ourselves. Are you stable in your form of power? Then to Didi, Didi Manmohini, Baba is still with you just as he was not separated. Now you have to show the part of being the embodiment of power in a visible way. The teachings you have received from the father have to be shown in a practical form. There is a large army of shaktis, but now you have to become the complete embodiment of power. 
Up to now, you have been progressing through the love of the child and father. Now, you have to make others powerful through the powers that you yourself have received from the father. Only such loving children will remain with the father till the end. Sweet, sweet Baba was showing a scene of you children just now where you were carrying the ashes. Do not just see the ashes, see the stage. The ashes themselves remind you of his stage. So we have to see Brahma Baba's stage. So when we go in these four pilgrimage places, it is to make our stage, you know, and to see the stage. There was the powerful stage in every way. So although externally you kept the ashes, you must not take the meaning of that to be the same as on the path of bhakti. Now Baba said, don't go into your bhakti, but understand it is our, to make our stage like Baba. This is why the ashes are there. Always see the stage with which the ashes were filled. Ordinary people will not be able to understand these things so clearly. Children have love and it will constantly remain for 21 births. Will all of you not come into the golden aged world with me? That is Brahma Baba was asking. Will we not claim the kingdom together? We are together now and we will remain together for many births. Now also, do not think that Baba is here and Dada is not or that Dada is here and Baba is not. Both of us are one. We cannot be separated from one another. So mother and father both are with us. In the same way, consider yourself to be the three murti, three murti, trinity. This is why Baba says, always keep the badge of the three murti with you. You know, Brahma, Vishnu and Shankar. And on top, Shiv Baba who comes and creates a Trimurti. When you see the three, Brahma, Vishnu and Shankar, you are reminded of your three murti stage. That is, you are reminded of your form and the remembrance of Bap Dada. This stage of the three murti is very well known. There is benefit for all of you children in this. Whatever the father, the benefactor says and inspires you to do, there is benefit in that. In each supreme version and in each drishti, there is a lot of benefit. But there are very few special Maharati children who now recognize the physical part. Now you must also make fast efforts to stabilize yourself in the karmatit stage. Just as you used to spend all your time with Bap Dada in the same way, keep him with you in every action at every moment. Children, remember these teachings. Do not ever forget them. Continue to have success in your relationships, in being loving, in being the embodiment of remembrance, and in having an easy nature by surrendering and being cooperative. Success is shining in the center of the forehead of all you children. Now, it has been too long. Is there anything else that you want to say? So, now once Baba was subtle, you know, I, uh, uh, he felt as if he has stayed too long. Now it's, it's too long. It has been too long. Is there anything else that you want to Say, while sitting in the subtle region, each child's daily timetable and chart are always in front of me. So our charts and daily routine is in front of Bhaktada. They are even more clearly visible now than in the corporeal form. And so Baba continues to see each one's results. 
the more you are stable in the object form, the more the actions performed by the senses will be according to the advice given by Srimad. So, I hope this, what did Baba mean? Oh, I read it again. Were you staying in your own Aviat stage with Baba in that combined form? Stable, huh? The more your actions will be according to Srimad. So Baba is talking about stable stage. Remember, Baba gave us a gift of unshakable and constant stage. Performed by the senses will be according, all the activities performed by the senses will be according to the advice given by Srimad. Children will have this experience. Now, on the basis of uh, your object state, perform actions as you have been doing according to Srimad. To have the same love for the things that Baba has love for means to make yourself a hundredfold fortunate. In his every vein, what did Baba have love for? Not the five elements. Love is always for the virtues. It isn't that he had love, but that he still ha has, uh, has love. So Baba is, a, is, Baba is not saying past tense that he had love, but that he still has love. Until the future new world is created, this love will remain unbroken. Love is for the souls and the task. Would this body have been your companion till the end? This is why have such love and become loving. No matter what kind of Maya confronts you, you must become the conqueror of Maya. So Baba, that's why he says, no matter how many tests comes, but Baba has given us the methods, the advice, everything, Srimad. Just as you put on a badge. Now put the badge of victory on your forehead. So victory on your forehead. The map of Madhuban should be in front of the whole world like a museum. It is the imperishable treasure store. Means Baba, say, Baba gives us the title, we are the walking, talking, we are the museum. It means our features, our uh, people should see our fortune on our forehead. You know, often Baba explains. So our stage uh, should be such that the map of Madhuban should be in front of the whole world like a museum. Baba said the mirror. Remember Baba reminded us of a mirror? It is the imperishable treasure store. It has to be revealed even more. Continue to write letters here, all of you have been doing. Take directions in the same way as you used to. The question of the body is something else, but the service is the same. And so, whatever it is, write to Madhuban about it. Maintain a constant connection. Give others evidence of your stage. So Baba said, give the evidence of your stage. Seeing you, others will do the same. And now, at the time of taking leave, you children know that whatever is the role in the drama, there is an incognito significance in that. Whatever further significance there is will be told to you according to the time. Now the memorial of you is in the sky. People of the world will see with their eyes whose Srimad these stars of the earth are following. So we are Dharti Kesitare, stars of the earth, and we point up who has made us that. And so Baba is saying that everyone looks up to God. Baba has said, do not sit there for too long. Acha, so Brahma Baba said that Shri Baba told him not to sit in this world for too long. And so Baba is saying, Acha, Om Shanti. And we say Om Shanti Namaste to Baba Dada.
Thank you. Would, any, would anyone like to share their reflections? No, everyone's content. So it's so different to Bhakti, isn't it? Ashes and death and all of that is one thing in Bhakti. But what does Baba want us to look at? He wants us to learn from the stage. So when we talk about the pilgrimage places in Madhuban, it's again so different. It's about the stage. And so Baba's saying that in every vein of Brahma Baba, was this remembrance of Shiv Baba, was this following of Srima. And Dadi Prakashmani says that around about the 14th or 15th of January, she was going to return back with that group that she brought from Mumbai. And Baba said that if you've got nothing particular to go back for, stay a few days. And we're getting this insight that Shiv Baba had said to Brahma Baba that it's now time to come and experience the subtle region. So over those few days, he showed Devi Prakashmani all the different departments and how they run. He uh, showed her the training center accommodation that was being built at that time, which is the other side of the Tower of Peace. And all of that construction, he, do you remember we were, reading that morally about the spiritual museum and the sister who was serving there she left the body a few weeks ago so there was a message for her and he signed the lease for that on the 17th of January so he did all of those things knowing he's now got to go and play another role and but they're there they're just emphasizing I think what is more normal for us now that you can be with Baba. You just have to be in the subtle stage. Just as you can't separate Shiv Baba and Brahm Baba, develop your yoga so that no one can separate you. You become the Trimurti with them. So you become a threesome with them. And no one can separate you. No Maya can't separate you. No one can separate you. And that's the spiritual endeavor that Baba wants us to focus upon. And then as we accumulate power to show that form of power, so empower others as well. So thank you all today again for another very interesting discussion. Thanks to Ranjan Ben for the morally today. And also warm greetings to those of you who tune in later on through the YouTube channel. And also feel welcome to suggest topics or morally they want us to cover. I was just going to remind you about this, you know, Brahma Baba's experience while living to Bodhi and all those messages you sent. So if they remind them. Yeah. So Om Shanti, everyone. Have a great week. Om Shanti. Thank you so Shanti. much. For, uh, have a beautiful week. Take care now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.